Bart arrived, and Daddy, played by Hanley Stafford, figures the weather is warm enough for the beach. Of course, he didn't figure on taking Snooks with him. So we find them both on the sand enjoying the ocean. Listen. Ah, what a pleasure. Breathe deeply, Snooks. Fill your lungs with the fresh ozone. Let's go swimming, Daddy. I told you we'll go swimming soon. Right now, I want to rest. Can you swim, Daddy? Can I swim? Huh. I'm just about the best swim in the world, that's all. Do you know when I was in Atlantic City, I swam the whole length of the boardwalk on my back? You swam the boardwalk? The entire length. Did you get any splinters? No, I didn't get any splinters. I mean, I swam in the water along the boardwalk. Now, I want to lie quietly for a few minutes. So you go play with your pail and shovel. All right. Daddy! Yes? I want to see the mermaids. Oh, there's no such thing as mermaids. Why? Well, because there isn't. A mermaid is a legendary figure that's supposed to be half woman and half fish. It's a myth. Is that a way to hold in your bathing suit? Eight holes in my bathing suit? I said it was a myth. Don't you know what a myth is? It's a Lady Moth, ain't it? <laughs> no, it's not a Lady Moth. And stop shoveling that sand in my mouth. Miss Mouth, Moth, Moth, I want to go swimming. Snooks, <laughs> I'll take you in the water if you let me rest a little while. How long? Until the waves recede a little. Now just play and don't bother me or ask me any more questions. All right. Daddy! Oh, what? What makes the water go away like that? The tide. Who tied it? Nobody tied it. I said tide, not tide. Huh? The rise and fall of the tide. It's caused by the moon attracting every particle of the earth and the ocean. And by the law of gravitation, the force acting on any particle is directed toward the moon's center. And is jointly proportional to the masses of the particle and the moon. And inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the particle and the moon's center. Mm. You feel swell, don't you, Dad? <laughs> yes, I feel fine. Well, I suppose I'd better make it a little simpler for you. Now, suppose I were to lay two eggs right here. <laughs> what do you like? I don't believe you can do it. <laughs> oh, forget it. Go on and build a sandcastle. Shall I put flags in it? Yes, put flags in it. I don't like flags. All right, then don't put flags in it. All right. Oh, I don't know. Do what you like. All right. Oh, oh snows. Why are you throwing that sand down my neck? <laughs> I like it. Well, cut it out. Can't you play like the other children? Make mud pies. Dig in the sand. Go on, pretend you're Robinson Crusoe. Who is he? Oh, you know. I've told you the story of Robinson Crusoe hundreds of times. About the man who was shipwrecked and lived on a cracker for a whole week. How did he move around? <laughs> he was on an island. The only thing he managed to save from the shipwreck was the tool chest. Tell me more, Daddy. Well, I started this myself. Uh, when he was cast ashore, Who he... Who was uh, cast? Robinson Crusoe. He was washed onto this desert island, and then... Why? Because he was shipwrecked. Who was? Robinson Crusoe! Uh -huh. <laughs> it was a good thing he had his tool chest, because he was able to build a hut. Then he started to build some chairs, and... And did he... Did he want chairs? Why did he want chairs? Because Daddy? he didn't have anything to sit on. I got some... Never mind that. <laughs> At the end of the day, when his work was done, he sat down on his chest. Could he stand on his nose? No. Uh -huh. Could he sit on his chest? I mean his tool chest. Oh, why did I have to drag you along to the beach? Because Mommy made you take me. Sure, sure. I get one day to myself, she ties you around my neck. Work like a dog, never get a chance to recuperate. <laughs> What's a recuperate, Daddy? Alice, I work every day in the office, don't I? I don't know. Well, I do. <laughs> I have to regain my energy. So when I come to the beach and lie in the sun, what do I do? That's what Mommy sent me to find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she did. <laughs> well, now, you listen. You go about your business and dig holes in the sand. I want to bury you, Daddy. No, I just want to lie here and get a sunburn. Why? Because that's what I came to the beach for. The sun is beneficial. The only chance I get to pick up a few violet rays... I know. I seem to wave to her. I snooks. You know very well that lady I waved at was Mummy's friend, Mrs. Lester. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> oh, what are you laughing at? I know. 
What do you know? It was Violet Ray. <laughs> now, don't you start that kind of stuff with me. The very idea. <laughs> the very idea. <laughs> All right, now, go on and play nicely in the sand with your pail and shovel. Collect some lovely shells, and then we'll take them home. I want to bury you, Dad. No, you can't bury me! Then I'll tell Molly... Now, you just stop that. I told you that lady was Mrs. Lester. And you know her as well as I do. It didn't look like Mrs. Lester. Well, you probably couldn't recognize her. Because she didn't have her street clothes on. Could you recognize her without her street clothes, Daddy? Why, of course. Why? <laughs> oh, leave me alone. Why can't you play like those other children? I'm hungry. Well, we'll soon go home and you'll have your dinner. Come buy me a hot dog, Daddy. No, it'll spoil your appetite. Mummy will give me the dickens. The way we're not wired? Her name's not Violet. And there was nothing wrong with my waving at her. She was with her husband. Oh, is that why you moved away? Oh. And Frank Morgan thinks he's a great spy. Huh? <laughs> oh, look at all the pretty boats on the water, Snooks. Isn't it wonderful to be here at the beach in the sunshine? I want to go swimming. Oh, all right. We'll take a fast dip and go right home. I'm sick of this anyway. Come on, and don't splash too much. Oh, Daddy. Oh, 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 this water's icy cold. <laughs> Snooks, <sighs> hang on to my hand. Are you scared, Daddy? No, I'm not scared. I don't want you to go beyond your death. <laughs> it's freezing. I want to go out, Daddy. So do I. Come on. Here, <laughs> grab this towel and rub yourself all over now, don't sit down in the sand again. Daddy. What do you want? Take me back in the water. You just came out. I have to go back again, quick. Now, why didn't you say something while you were in there? Because I just felt the sand in my bathing trunk. Ah, come on. What a life. <laughs> Snooks was the brainchild of comedian and former Ziegfeld Folly star Fanny Bryce. Bryce claimed that Snooks emerged as part of her vaudeville act in 1912 as a caricature of Baby Peggy, a popular child star of the day who appeared in ruffles and curls and flounces, and looked to Bryce like a strawberry ice cream soda. She based the personality of Snooks, a slyly impish infant, on her own childhood. Bryce first played Snooks on the radio in Ziegfeld, Ziegfeld Follies of the Air in a bit written by Philip Rapp and David Freeman. Rapp continued to write for her when Bryce moved on to The Good News Show. Bryce was given her own show in 1944, Toasty's Time, which was soon renamed The Baby Snooks Show. Snooks became the primary element of Bryce's repertoire, to the extent that in later years she rarely appeared in public out of character. The show soon became a favorite of radio listeners and presented a style of adversarial comedy that presaged the Bickersons. Daddy Higgins, played by Hanley Stafford, and Mommy Higgins, played by Arlene Harris, were constantly bickering, the conflict invariably prompted by the manipulative, blackmailing, double-crossing snooks who found endless entertainment in the strife. Series regulars included Leon Ledoux as snooks's younger brother Robespierre, Danny Thomas, Charlie Cantor, and Lillian Randolph. Mer Meredith Wilson, Carmen Dragon, and vocalist Bob Graham provided the music. In 1945, when illness prevented Bryce from appearing, the Search for Baby Snooks storyline was included as a plot device, and guest stars searching for Snooks included Robert Benchley, Sidney Greenstreet, Kay Kaiser, and Peter Laurie. In May 1951, Bryce suffered a cerebral hemorrhage and died at age 59, two days after the last broadcast of the Baby Snook Show. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next week.